Hey everyone, Daniel again. As you know, I'm doing a live video each weekday in December and just taking some time out to complete uh, some thoughts that I'd started yesterday. Basically, how do you grow a studio business faster? And the thought that I began with yesterday is that it is, it is foolish, maybe a little bit naive to think that a, a tiny bit of investment or just doing small little things or making a half-hearted attempt at solving your enrollment problem is going to result in big success. And I started out by saying that you really have to dedicate yourself to the prospect of becoming a better marketer, a better business owner. And the amount of effort that you put into learning your musical craft, the amount of effort you put into learning how to become a great educator, well, that level of effort is going to be needed to take your business to a level where it's running very comfortably and where you don't feel it's a struggle. Yesterday, I gave uh, the idea that there were three things that really stood out to me as, thing, uh, as ideas that helped me grow my business and, and help my studio um, basically get to the point where it's practically running itself. And I'm gonna actually get to that in just a minute because that isn't an exaggeration, that's not hyperbole. Um, the first thing I said, I talked about this more at length in yesterday's video, was books. And I mentioned a few books, including Wealth Warrior, uh, Pitch Anything, and a couple more books. If you didn't see that video, um, go back. It's there on the feed. Uh, th those are fantastic books. I ran out of time. So today I'm going to finish up with the last two thoughts that I had about growing a studio business um, and ways that even though you're going to be putting in a lot of effort and a lot of time, a lot of energy, there are ways that you can make the passage of time, make that pathway, make that journey a little bit easier. So, uh, first one was read great books, get information from really trustworthy, credible sources. Idea number two was hire a coach. Uh, that might seem a little self-serving because I myself am a business coach um, and this isn't uh, some uh, hackneyed attempt to backdoor people into, into hiring me. I, I truly, um, I'm saying this uh, because this is really where the journey began for me. That's really where I began to see an acceleration in my business. I was already experiencing some success with the curriculum that I was promoting. I was experiencing some success with, um, with marketing in my studio. Uh, but I was getting to a point where I felt as if I was, it was just hitting the ceiling. And the information, the books, some of the books that I mentioned yesterday were beginning to become not enough. I felt like I had all the information and yet change wasn't happening. I had great information, but change wasn't happening. And so I began looking around and the idea of hiring a business coach became uh, really interesting to me. And so I went to an organization that I trusted, an organization that I actually purchased business training from in the past, and I asked um, for a referral to a business coach. Well, as it turns out, at the higher levels of their organization, they had um, business coaches that worked for their organization that they used internally and that they used for hiring clients. So I booked a session with one of their coaches. We talked for an hour. We talked about, bus about my business. He talked about his business. Um, he talked about, uh, he asked me a lot of questions. Um, I told, I gave him very honest feedback on, on where my business was and the places I felt stuck. And he just made some suggestions and he kind of, unpretzeled my brain in some ways. He gave me some perspectives. Looking back, any individual piece of advice that he gave me, I, I don't look at it as like, oh wow, that was earth shattering. But he challenged me in a couple places where I was stuck. And he got me to see things from a perspective that I had not yet seen or imagined. Um, here's the result. Here's the result of this piece of advice, hire a coach. About three months later, I was making 33% more in my business, 33% more revenue. And as you know, uh, especially if you're a home-based teacher, there's not a lot of margin. So that, I'm, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of overhead. So that was all straight profit for me. It was really exciting to have grown the studio that much in such a short period of time. And this is something I did a while back. Um, that one conversation was hugely transformational for me and uh, it really got me thinking and it put me down the path of hiring several different coaches over the years. I still, to this day, retain the services of a coach. Um, 
I don't believe someone ends their need to have one. You always could use an outside voice, an outside perspective. If it's helpful to think of it in this way, um, even though coaches can sometimes be pricey, um, you might think of it as hiring an employee for your business, except one that is incredibly strategic and maybe and possibly has more experience than you, hopefully has more experience than you, or has the ability to to see from the outside and since their profession is a, since they are professionally a coach, they've looked into a lot of businesses. They can begin to see patterns amongst those businesses. They can come to your business. They came to my business and saw places where I was stuck, told me where I could make improvements. Um, and so that was huge for me and has continued to be huge for me. I've, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Um, I could really go in <laughs> and tell you how much I love my coach, but I'll leave it there. So that's the second thing, hire a coach. Third thing, automation. Automate your business. And this is what I was referring to at the beginning of the video. The idea that um, I want my business to grow even while I'm not there. And here's the story. Um, once upon a time, and this is actually the story probably of every private studio teacher, you do everything. You're doing invoicing, you're, you're doing scheduling, you're doing makeup scheduling. If you do makeups, most people do. You're doing uh, the onboarding process, all these things. And I said that I wanted to have more time. I said that I wanted to, to, be, to have a business, that I didn't want to just be self-employed. And I made half-hearted attempts at extricating myself from all the little processes in the business, trying to get myself out of the business. It's that cliche, work on your business, not in your business. Okay, well, there is a reason it's a cliche. It's because it's true. Um, and so when I got serious about, about automation and about getting free from my business, I went a level deeper than I ever went, through, ever went before. And I actually started out writing processes and procedures for things in my studio. So... I literally hired a person to do invoicing and I made a 30 minute video screen share of not only the process of using the invoicing software, but also the rationale, the philosophy behind why I do that. Um, the thoughts that I have, little tips and tricks about how to make the process go easier, what to do when parents don't pay on time. I literally covered every single thing that I could think of that had anything to do with money and invoicing in the business. And then inevitably, as we went through a couple cycles of her handling the invoicing, it became apparent where I had dropped the ball and hadn't, there were, there were, there were situations that I hadn't thought of in, in the original video that I made for her. And so we went back and she had typed out like this, this procedure document that went step by step how to do everything, talk about these conditions. We added to it. So it got to the point where it's not just that I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not even thinking about it anymore. And that is a huge distinction to make because you can hand off something to an employee or a contractor or an assistant inside your studio or inside your music school. Um, but until you've gone to the links of just completely emptying your brain and designing, and this is huge, this is huge, designing the system in such a way that they can take ownership of the system, that, you, that, the, that the system is no longer dependent on you, you're never going to truly get it off your brain until you do that. And you won't have peace. You won't have, you won't have this um, ability to let it go, you know. When I did that for invoicing and saw how wonderful that was, I just began looking at all the little systems in my business. And one by one, I started handing them off to her. And again, one by one, I saw that, oh, interesting. I've built this system around my personality and who I am. I've built it to be dependent on me. And so I had to change things in my business to, to match up to the fact that I didn't want to have to think about it anymore. And so I had to make it a little more foolproof. I couldn't rely on my 15 years of wisdom and experience anymore. I had to change things. Listen, let's be honest. And like this video, if, if, you, if you agree with me right now, because I can see the likes come across the screen. If you truly want to get, if you truly want to get free and you want to get this off your head, you are going to have to, um, you're going to have to, to, to really let go of things that are already working for you. And honestly, that can be very scary. Now, um, Lauren asked, I wonder how many students you had before it was worth it to hire someone to do invoicing. Quite honestly, um, I uh, averaged 90 to 95 students a month. Okay, that's a lot. The invoicing process per month 
um, takes an hour to an hour and a half. So uh, I had that assistant doing other things for me in my business, including um, she's automated my social media marketing. She's done things like that. Um, this assistant that I hired, um, you know, I pay her uh, a good, you know, a good wage. Um, but that hour and a half, that, you know, 25 to $30 that I'm paying her for that hour and a half of work, is it worth it for me to get that completely off my head? And then maybe there's an hour of work that she does throughout the month as she chases parents down who aren't paying on time, or she has to enter new people into the invoicing software, that sort of thing. All in all, is that worth the amount of money per month? Um, yeah, I would say it is. I would definitely say it is. Um, so is it worth it for someone who's, you know, maybe at 15 or 20 people in their studio? I don't know. It depends on what your priorities are. Um, and, and I would kind of leave it at that. But I do know that if you create the system really efficiently, you can, um, you can decrease the amount of time that it would take. Uh, so that's one way that I've automated. Another way I've automated is I've automated my sign up process. So a lot of studios, they have a very haphazard sign up process. Uh, the sign up process that I have is, is almost completely digital. I am trying to get everyone to come to me digitally, not come to me on the phone, um, you know, not sending me emails. I want everything to come through a central point of contact. And so all of my advertising and marketing is designed to do just that, come to the central point of contact. Well, what that means is, Someone comes to my website or my social media page, they fill out my contact form, I get notified in my inbox, and then that kicks off a script. It used to be that I would handle that, but again, this is another thing where I automated this process, I have the assistant handle it now, not a big deal. It doesn't matter which one you do. The important thing is, is that you're not leaving things up to chance. Another thing that's true about this is that if you automate this and make it all digital, that you then have records of people who've contacted you, you can go back through and systematically follow up with people that have contacted you in the past. How many times have you had someone contact your studio? They don't end up signing up. Maybe they don't even respond after that initial contact they gave you. Um, and then that's it. Sayonara, they're gone. Uh, I have lists of people who contacted me seven, eight years ago, and I still sometimes go back and send an email to those people. And you'd be surprised the number of times per year I end up getting a new student because I've gone back to someone who contacted me three or four years ago. There was a family that contacted me. I can't remember how many years ago it is now. Um, and their daughter was two. And they said, hey, how old does a child have to be before they can start piano? And I was like, I mean, there might be some programs out there that work with two-year-olds. This guy is not doing them. Um, and so I said, hey, can I contact you later? And they said, sure. I went out three years of my calendar to when I knew she'd be five years old. I, I made a note in the calendar. And when I got there, three years later, I'd completely forgotten about them. And boom, there they were. They were right in the calendar. I ended up contacting them. Um, they ended up eventually joining the studio. And without that level of, you know, kind of foresight and, and automation and, and capturing things digitally might not have happened. So that is it, my friends. Um, this is how you kind of get, this is how you can kind of get free. Uh, really go for the, the, the kind of to summarize the, the three ideas that I brought up here is get great information, understand that information often isn't enough, which kind of leads to the second point, which is hire a coach that can help you through your blocks, um, help you with, uh, to get perspectives that maybe you don't have, get perspectives that you don't uh, see, um, get outside opinion on maybe where you're, you're stuck, help me a ton, um, I would say it was very instrumental in getting my studio up to the size it is. It was instrumental in me starting other business ventures that I'm involved in that I don't even necessarily talk about on my blog or that are even connected to music, honestly. Um, so that was hugely helpful for me. And then automate, because this is how you get free. And just as kind of a final story, I was going to bring this up. I was in Florida at the beginning of September when Hurricane um, Irma hit. And... Uh, it just so happened that coincided with um, one of my te uh, one of the teachers that works for me being hired on, and it was his first two weeks, and it was a, a joy to be getting copied on emails between my assistant, who I've ha who I have set up with systems, who that when we get contacts, she automatically knows what to do with them. It was a joy to see her conversing with this new teacher, two people that didn't know each other before, and her 
basically handling things and, and him starting the job and him getting students and him getting scheduled and, and knowing when to be where and, and just seeing those two talk and, and, and me not even having to worry about it. You know, I just kind of checked in my email once a day and saw that everything was running very, very smoothly. And I will tell you that it wasn't easy to get to the point where so much of the studio was automated, but it was incredibly worth it because I could be in Florida for two weeks. Um, I could be at some points completely without a cell phone signal because Irma knocked out things and I knew the business wasn't collapsing back home. So anyway, hope this is helpful. As I mentioned before, I'm doing one of these every weekday, sometime around 11 to 1 p.m. each day, every weekday for the month of December, just doing this for fun, seeing what it's like, seeing if it's valuable to people, seeing if people like it. If you do like this, if this is helpful, if you wanna see more of these, tell me below. I love getting comments. I mean, it's very helpful to me. Like this video, share this video to the Piano Facebook groups, tell people you know, how it was valuable to you. Um, it lets me know that this is a valuable experience for you. Um, and the other thing is, is if you have a question, uh, like, uh, hold on, yeah, like Lauren did, um, write in the comments, if I didn't get a chance to do it today, um, I'll do it tomorrow or sometime later. I've already actually got a little backlog of, of uh, questions that people have asked that I'm going to be getting to the rest of the week, but I will get to them. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate your attention and time. Have a great week and uh, happy holidays. Bye-bye.